Hey there, everyone. Welcome to Bad Kids Don't Exist. This is the podcast that helps adults better understand kids to create environments where kids and their caregivers thrive. As you're watching this, I'm on my way back from San Antonio, Texas, as I participated in a conference called Clarity Con down there. And so I decided to share with you some content that was recorded last year for a virtual conference that I participated in. At that conference, I was sharing about how to differentiate between typical and atypical disruptive behaviors in children. Because let's face it, Sometimes kids make mistakes. Sometimes kids even make choices that are disruptive. That doesn't mean they are bad kids. And it doesn't always mean that there's something major going on. So in this episode, I will walk you through the three ways that as a child therapist, I differentiate between typical and atypical disruptive behaviors in children. Check it out. Let's talk now about how to differentiate between typical and atypical disruptive behaviors in kids. Because let's be honest, kids will be kids. They're gonna do some things that are mean or frustrating or annoying, not because there's anything major going on or because they are some cretin, but because they are kids. <laughs> there are ways to know though if you're dealing with a typical disruptive behavior or an atypical disruptive behavior. There's three things that I look for as a mental health professional to see if I'm working with a typical disruptive behavior or an atypical disruptive behavior. Those three things are changes, patterns, and extremes. Let's start with changes. It could be a change within the child or a change around the child that's affecting the child. Let me explain. A change within the child would be something like they used to really love something and now they don't want anything to do with it. Not just that they loved it and then they did it way too much and now they're a little bit bored of it. It's they loved it and then now they don't want anything to do with it. That could be with things that they like or people that they like. Maybe they've had a friend or a group of friends and they loved being around them and now they don't want anything to do with that friend or that friend group. Maybe they go from being very extroverted to being very introverted or the opposite, going from being very introverted to very extroverted or any major changes in the child's appetite, not just the foods that they like, but the amount of food that they want and that they feel they need. Either they go from needing a whole lot of food to very little food or very little food to a whole lot of food. That would be a change within the child. Then there's changes around the child. Maybe their parents are going through a divorce. Maybe they just lost a friend who moved away. Maybe they just moved to a new environment. It could be a change that they are going through in their life, not a change within the child, but a change that they are going through. Puberty would be another one where it's a major change that can affect the child. If there is a major change either within the child or around the child, along with disruptive behaviors, it's more likely you're dealing with atypical disruptive behaviors. We'll talk a little bit later about why change causes stress in the brain and why that causes kids to act out more. But for now, just know that if there's a major change either within or around the child, along with disruptive behaviors, it's more likely that that's an atypical disruptive behavior that you're dealing with. The second identifier for atypical disruptive behaviors is patterns. It's not just a rough day. It's not just one day of being sad or uh, sad for a period of time after losing someone. It's not the first time you caught them doing this disruptive behavior. It's a predictable pattern that happens consistently. It's almost every time they go in that class. It's almost every time they're around that friend. It's almost every time they log on to YouTube. It's a pattern that's fairly predictable. And regardless of expectations, regardless of discussions, regardless of positive or negative consequences, 
the child continues to deal with this disruptive behavior. If it's a pattern, it's more likely an atypical disruptive behavior. And finally, the third identifier for atypical disruptive behaviors is extremes. Because I work mainly with kids, any illegal behavior is considered an extreme behavior or any behavior that is very verbally aggressive or physically aggressive or violent at all would be considered an extreme. So it could be that the behavior is extreme or it could be an extreme response to something that seems fairly small to the rest of the world. If you see those extremes, either extremes in behavior or extremes in reaction, it's more likely you're dealing with atypical disruptive behaviors. So that's a good framework, some good guidelines for how to understand when you're dealing with atypical disruptive behaviors. Because don't forget, sometimes kids are just disruptive. Sometimes adults are just disruptive. It's not because there's anything major going on. It's not something that requires professional help. It's just part of life. Just because sometimes kids do things that are disruptive, it doesn't mean that they are bad kids. Sometimes adults do things that are disruptive too, and we don't just label them as bad either. Remember, some things exist, some things don't. Bad kids don't exist. I love helping adults better understand kids to create environments where kids and their caregivers thrive. If that sounds like a good fit for you and your next event or a training that you might need for your team, click the link in the description to this video or head over to badkidsdontexist.com slash booking and there you'll find all the information you need to hire me as a keynote speaker or a workshop leader. I can't wait to work with you and make your next event a great one.